Boom. Bradley Viking here. Ready to talk to you guys about Twilight. Duh, duh, duh! And you're like, Bradley, Bradley, Twilight came out in 2005. The movie came out, the first movie came out in like 2008. This is old stuff. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm like, uh, Midnight Sun just came out August 4th, 2020. And I just finished the audiobook, like, just over an hour ago. I had to check my clock there. And, yeah. I'm reacting to it. I've... It's been a four-day journey. A four-day journey. Majority of it over three days. Like, literally spent uh, eight to nine hours a day listening to it. Like, at least the... Yesterday and today I was at work and at my job I have the opportunity to listen to audiobooks all day long. So it's like, yeah, I was listening to when I didn't talk to people. So that's what was going on. But day before that, I was not at work. I was just hanging out at home. I was listening to it. I went to the gym. I was supposed to turn on my gym music. Said I just kept listening to it. And I got an awesome arm pump while listening to Midnight Sun. So here is my thoughts. My rambly, reactionary, unprepared, off-the-cuff thoughts. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. And I, like, I have some criticisms. But overall, I think Stephanie Meyer's been overly critiqued as a writer. Like, I think some of her world-building is iffy. And her characters do insane things. But, like, her prose isn't that bad bad it's more the structure like actually putting words on the paper have them all go together it works it's just sometimes the characters kind of dumb and also it's like i think the main thing why all those years ago i was younger less mature and it was hard for me from first person perspective to really relate to bella right our viewpoint character so i'm breaking down i actually quite like the part of breaking down where it's from jacob's viewpoint because I could, like, relate to him better. Even though I'm like... J there are some moments of like... Jacob, man, what are you doing? Except also Jacob kind of... Also acknowledges, like... He kind of sits down and he's like... Jacob, what am I... Like, I am Jacob. What am I doing? This is dumb. And that's entertaining and refreshing. But he also just keeps doing it. Ed Edward's kind of the same way. Where he's like... This is messed up and wrong. Why do I keep doing this? Meanwhile, I'm going to keep doing this. Oh, man. Like, it is really wrong. I should not be stalking this girl as I open her window and sneak into her room while she's sleeping. <sighs> and <laughs> all that jazz. So there's the fun of that. Like, I maybe I needed a boy's perspective on th the events of this story to... Um, relate to it and to be able to enjoy it because yes I enjoyed it I heavily enjoyed it both like kind of a little bit mocking it but honestly I just kind of like groove with the story I listened to it on audible and if they ever want to sponsor me I'm right here I'm on the internet I will take the sweet audible money that all the people on YouTube seem to acquire once they get enough subscribers and I don't know sell their souls Want my soul? We can negotiate something. <laughs> I'm still out. Yeah, as I said before, this is very rambly. Maybe later when I go to my sister's, acquire my copy of the first book, I sort of compare them. Compare Twilight from Bell's perspective and then compare um, Midnight Sun, which is Twilight written again from Edward's point of view. See how they all line up. I'll make a more organized video. Maybe. Possibly. Who knows? Maybe YouTube will shut me down. You never know what the future will tell. But yeah, for those who do not know, this book has been long in the coming because Stephanie Meyer started writing it. She at least the first chapter is a sample. But then someone she trusted released like the first 12 chapters. So then she officially just had them up, up on a PDF file on her website for years. It feels like it's been like 10 years. If someone can get the actual timeline of how many years it's been. I know it's been over for five. I remember talking, I think it has been like 10 years because, yeah, because of the people who I was talking to about that with at the time versus who 
who I talked to now. It's probably been at least 10 years when, like, that leak happened. And then she was kind of like, I quit, like, not writing this. And it was like, I think there may have been rumors over the years, like, she's going to finish, go back and finish it. I was like, okay. And then 2020, like, the only good news that came out of 2020 was Stephanie Meyer then re- announced, yo, I'm going to finish this book and release it. And we're like, what? We haven't done Twilight in so long. And what? Twilight is the bright spot of 2020. What? So, yeah. And it just came out. And so I decided, because of my lifestyle, it's easier for me to listen to something, like, if I want to digest it quickly. I'm supposed to sit down and read it. Like, I'm still working my way through some textbook, like, books that are... Uh, like, I am taking forever to finish a dog's journey. Not because it's bad or anything. Just to sit down and physically read is... Getting distracted. So yeah, so I bought the audiobook. Uh, Jake Abel reads the audiobook and does a fantastic job. I would happily listen to any other book that he chooses to read, presume if I liked the book. Like if I liked what was written down in the book. Because he did a really good job as a reader. I thought he did. He, he could have worked a bit more on like the range of different voices. He doesn't have that like Roy Dutrice gift where you, all these different voices. And the girl voices like sound enough like, okay, yeah, that's a girl. That's a Bella. But like angry Bella sounds a bit off because he's a dude. And, but he's trying to scream and it's a bit weird. But like when Edward loses his cool and like just goes. Rah! And even times where he's like roaring, like, run, no! I enjoy it. I enjoy it. enjoy it immensely. But yeah, so the fun of the book is that you have this neurotic, overly dramatic per individual. You're inside his head. Um, he's pretty callous towards most human life, despite the fact that, like, the Cullens are vegetarians and, you know, they only eat animals people but like he also doesn't care about anybody who's not in his like immediate family like he until he realizes he falls in love with Belle which takes some chapters to realize like kind of be like okay you start caring about her here and a few chapters later he's like, he's like I'm in love with her no doubt but it also is kind of fun to go along the ride and yeah that's the main appeal is like these events happening from his perspective that said this book is twice as long as Twilight, right? If you go on Audible and you look up Twilight, which I did, it's about 12 hours and something. This book is on Audible, 24, 5 hours and 49 minutes. For reference, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the longest of the Harry Potter series, is about that 24, 25 hours long. I think Breaking Dawn, the other like long book of the series, which kind of breaks up into three parts, let, let us not forget. And the ending of that book drags on. And that book's about 20 hours. So there's kind of a reference pool of how long this book is. That said, it's different in... Yeah, that said, it is different in structure. And so there's my general thoughts and feelings. And now I'm going to, like, go into spoiler territory. And I'm just going to spoil this freaking book. That said, if what I do sounds good, like, stop the video and go pick up this book. Because you might actually enjoy it. It's kind of weird. But I think she's actually kind of improved as a writer. There's things, there's little fixes. And there's a lot of added details. That's the thing, right? There's not a whole... Like, the story doesn't change. But there's definitely, like, stuff Edward was doing when he wasn't around Bella. And that's kind of neat. But most of what I think takes up the chunk of, like, page time, as it were, is uh, flashbacks. And that was, like, stuff that was in the original 12 chapters is his flashbacks. You know, the original 12 chapters, people were pretty familiar. I've gotten a lot of joy of them over the years, reading, like, the beginning. That said, that was definitely a manuscript. It was... You know, it was a certain draft. It wasn't a complete rough copy. But while the majority of the first 12 chapters are the same, like, let's say about 90% the same, 80 at worst, she's definitely gone through and, like, edited and added 
changed like a few things. A few small changes, admittedly I'm basing it memory and it's frustrating because I couldn't find the original PDF. Obviously like she's released a whole book. Why would you keep a PDF available of the 12 chapters when you could just go buy the book and have the complete book? Very right? bad move. But that said, I do wish I had, because I had a laptop where I had the PDF downloaded just so I could like access it. So why not? But that laptop has died because I am a death death to laptops. That's what they should call me. Um, death to laptops. PDF has died. So there is a PDF and I like reading. So I'm going off of memory. I'm basing this off of memory and some notes from a live journal. Cleo at live journal was just like went through the Twilight books years, years ago. Just makes fun of it. There's just a line where he's like, why were you? Where she's like mocking it, like writes in Bella's voice, like, why were you in school, huh? I can't stop myself here. Keep your eye on the prize. And I love that. I always just go back, like every couple of years, I go back to that live journal and read up on it. Because it entertains me so. But yeah, so I'm based off of memory. But based off my memory, there's things she added in here that weren't in that like original stuff. Um, things like, I think, I don't know, interrogating, interrogations. Oh, I need to, that's the thing, that was like, it's a long book, and this was like day one, because I got through the first 12 chapters pretty darn fast, because I was like really into this. But I think, it added in when they're kind of talking at school, um, a bunch more except that sort of what the chapter 12 break is they take a line from alice a moment where alice is like i love her you're gonna kill me they put she puts out in a later chapter it was an earlier bit there's a whole like there's a whole bunch of little things all right and there's the oh right no i remember the big thing is when edward's basically kind of like observing bella and like seeing she's he's kind of like he's kind of like sitting there like taking mental notes of all the things she does when it's like, all right, I think I'm in love with this girl. Let's see what kind of person she actually is. And I'm just going to take all these notes. And he like, that's what he does. He, like in the early chapters before they really start talking, he's like sitting there just observing her through the minds of other people. St stalking, stalking her pretty much. But yeah, observing her through the minds of other people. And he just makes this like list of categories. He decides that like, She's brave. Bella is brave. And Bella is selfless. And it all culminates in Bella is good. And there's this irony because he's like analyzes through the eyes of Mike Newton and Mike Newton like creates this version of Bella in his head and he's like, oh, you're so wrong. You don't even know. You don't even know this girl. Who? Like you don't know. Like this girl is nothing of the girl that I created in my head. Because I've obviously spent all this time talking to her. He has not. He has not spent that much time talking to her yet, right? This is before he really starts talking to her. But he's like, ah, I know who she is. And you don't, Mike Newton, because you just talk to her, but you're just, like, not listening. But I'm observing her through all these eyes, and I watch her sleep. I don't know if this is that time. But, yeah, then he mentions, like, a series of minor incidents. Just go over quickly, like inviting the stoner chick to be the lab partner and all these like kind of nice things Bella does to really just why like no guys she's a good person like she see how nice she is and I'm like I don't remember this I do not remember this in been like in the original like rough draft we got I do not remember these incidents in the original Twilight book although it's been a long time since I read that book so maybe it happened Again, I'm waiting on my sister to get back my copy so I can cross-reference. But I don't remember that happening. Like, it was, I mentioned this terror character in the bio class to work on a group project with. And I'm like, I have no memory of this terror person. And she's never mentioned again either. Like, it just mentions, like, one of, like, there was this kind of girl bad grades terror and Belle offered to let be part of, like, a group project with her. And I think Mike... Mike's like, ugh, stoner chick. And literally, I don't think this girl's ever mentioned anywhere else in the series ever again. So, presumably, one of the vampires were going to murder. No, no, they didn't. Um, but, 
there's a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. There is a bit of relatability when he but it's also like ironically funny of Edward being like Oh, I'm in love with a girl and I don't know how to talk to her. What do I do? And I'm flailing in it and she could never love me because I'm a monster. And I feel like the basicness of the basic idea of that is relatable to a lot of guys. Like, I have no idea where he's like, how could she be into me? I don't know what she's into because I can't read her mind. And so the basic frustration is where like girls just do got things that guys have trouble comprehending. And of course, none of us are mind readers and the whole appeal to Edward kind of is like, he knows what's going on in every other girl's mind, but he can't read Bella's mind. He's like, what is she thinking? I must know. How dare someone be able to think and I not know what they think around me. <sighs> Even as like, in the, be the book begins, he's like, all these people are thinking and they're so boring and this is awful. Why do I even listen to all these thoughts? But now he's like, oh, there's a brain I can't. But it's like, he wants what he can't have. And he's like, he's like, maybe she wants an average ordinary boy. What do I know? I don't know anything about taste. And it's like, dude, you know you're incredibly handsome. And that woman swoon over you left and right. And they do win this book. Like, just, he mentions of Jessica's fantasies. And like, the school secretary or office lady or whatever is like, swoon. And like, he deliberately uses the fact that he can make her swoon. Try to manipulate her. All this stuff, and it takes him forever really. Wait a minute. Their heart races when they swoon over me. And Bella's heart races when she's around me. <gasps> Bella must be into me. Like, it's like, he's supposed to be incredibly intelligent. And yet, it's so, he's so dumb. And he does all these, like, dorky things. Like, he has a drink. It's a Snapple, I think. And he keep he, like, pockets the lid. He keeps the lid and he keeps us this token. Like, it's just like, he should be off scrapbooking. He honestly sometimes has a 13-year-old girl who should be off scrapbooking. But also sometimes he's like a sociopath. And a controlling, manipulative, stalking monster. And this juxtaposition is hilarious to me. It's this hilarious juxtaposition of all the things that he is. But I'm gonna let you go and come back with part two because it's getting long.